But you are washed now. You are sanctified. You are justified. Not because you stop doing it, but because you believe in the name of the Lord Jesus. And that's why you have all this stuff going on in the churches today. Because of this kind of gospel. Is this making sense, people? Let's look at Galatians, the third chapter. Two more books over. Galatians 3, verses 8 and 9. Or it gets even better. Notice this, y'all. I mean, it says it right here. It's plain. It's right here in black and white. Galatians 3 and 8. It says, and the scripture, notice this, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen. It actually calls them heathen here. Gentiles, right. That God would justify the heathen, how? Through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all the nations be blessed. So then, they which be of faith, are blessed with faithful Abraham. Y'all see this? So in other words, this is the concept, this is the idea that we are spiritual Israel. That's what the Jews tell you. We, we, are, we are heirs of the promise of Abraham because of our faith. As unholy as we are, as unrighteous as we are, because of our faith, we are heirs of the promise of Abraham. Notice the 10th verse, y'all. Well, this is the way it's going to the 9th verse here. Uh, no, 13th verse, I'm sorry. Notice what it says. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Now notice this, people. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the who? Thank you. On the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Oh, this is deep. This is deep. Okay, let's cover the thing of atonement here. It's deep. Atonement means that the blood that was shed by Jesus on Calvary covers or takes away the sins of the believer, thereby leaving the believer without any obligation to repair any damage done as a result of his sinful actions. That's what atonement means. In other words, you might have killed somebody. You might have stole from somebody. You might have raped somebody. You might have, you, you, I mean, all the horrible things that they do. Because Jesus shed his blood on Calvary. That's the doctrine. You don't even have to go back and say, I'm sorry to nobody. It's, that's the atonement. See Romans 5 and 6. Now, y'all know we've been believing this. Romans 5. And six. If you have it, say I'll say. For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the who? Here it is plain as day. Literally calling them ungodly. Ungodly. Okay? Look at the eighth verse. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were what? Yet sinners, what happened? Christ died for us, much more than being now justified what? Not by doing right. Y'all see it there? In other words, we didn't stop sinning. We didn't stop killing people. We didn't stop invading other lands. No, we're still doing that. But it's all right. Because we've been justified by His blood. We shall be saved from wrath through him. Tenth verse, notice what it says. For if when we were enemies, now check it out, people. Here it is right here in black and white. 
The Gentiles by nature are God's enemies. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Now, you know, that's some deep stuff. First Corinthians 15. Y'all don't mind these Bible verses, do you? I think I'll just let y'all see Paul's gospel for yourself. First Corinthians 15, third chapter. I mean, 15th chapter, third verse. First Corinthians 15 and 3. When you have it, say, Ashe. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. Now, mind you, there's not a verse in the Bible that says that. I should, I'll take that back. There's not a verse in the Scriptures that he was referring to. It says that. Got to keep in mind, when this was said, the New Testament didn't exist. All right? So there's not a verse in the Old Testament that says anything like that, but that's, you know, there. Look at 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. Next book over. 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, verse 14 and 15. Hope y'all making notes here tonight. For the love of Christ constraineth us because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Y'all see that? Now, let's look over the ninth chapter of Hebrews, because Hebrews really makes it plain. Hebrews, the ninth chapter. If you get to James, you just passed it. Go on back a few books toward the back of the Bible. Hebrews, the ninth chapter and eleventh verse. Can't make it no plainer than this. Hebrews 9 and 11. If you have it, say Ashe. It says, But Christ being come... And high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. Check this now. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Do y'all see this? Thirteenth verse. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and of, and the ashes of an heifer, or an heifer actually, sprinkling the unclean, sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, notice this, purge your conscience. Do y'all see that? Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Now, that's some serious teaching, man. To teach people that no matter how wicked you are, no matter how criminal you have been, no matter how inhumane you have been, the blood of Christ will clear your conscience. That's deep. And you want to know why we in the mess we in. Mm -mm. Look at the 24th verse. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself. All right now. Now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year without blood of, without, with the blood of others. For then must he often have offered, suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Y'all see that? 
as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. So Christ was offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Going right into the next chapter, the fourth verse. 